Hey all you scholars out there, it's Makito, and uh, today I am playing in the Massachusetts Go Foundation League, uh, MGF for short. Um, today I'm facing Eric Osman. I actually had a bye to this week, so I was going to take a break from the league, but um, Eric's opponent said he couldn't play today, so Eric reached out to me. Uh, me and Eric have played five games in the past, and I won two out of the five. Um, so we're going to see if I can, you know, do well against him. Um, it's funny when I'm looking at the stats, right? He's much closer to one Don than I am. And I've seen him actually hit one Don more than once, um, which I haven't yet. Uh, and he's played almost over 2000, you know, almost 2000 games where I'm only hitting about 200. So this is going to be an interesting, uh, competition between the two of us guys uh he's sp uh very specifically asked me not to get comments from you guys like i mean you guys can comment please do but try not to help me out during the game right this is a very serious competitive game and that's what i want too so uh but at the same time <laughs> i'm still going to be giving you all my live thoughts and uh that is how should i put it that's going to distract me. So as much as a serious game as it's going to be, you know, there's still going to be some distraction. <laughs> but it's fine. I mean, I just want to... I'm just having a good time, win or lose. But I'm going to try my very best. Yeah, I never joined yet. Maybe I will. I'm busy now with AYD and another Italian league. Uh, okay. Yeah, I mean, it's a lot to be in leagues. There was one point when I was... Uh, working a normal nine to five job how do i talk on twitch uh we can talk on discord with chris sagner after the match uh good luck need more points of view uh so when i was working a regular nine to five and i didn't have to worry uh so much about income. I was a part of the AYD and the International Soccer Go School. Um, I loved being in both. Um, I actually really liked the International Soccer Go School. Getting reviews from professionals was amazing, uh, truly amazing. Uh, I really liked uh, Rio Meda, uh, Francis Meyer, and uh, I think it was Ting. Um, I mainly worked with Francis Meyer. You can play um, teaching games with them. And like, it was really awesome getting taught by pros. I wish I could continue it, but I got to get some things moving. But for now, uh, Raven's awesome. He's been very uh, committed to teaching me, which uh, I super appreciate. Need more point in every move. Um, but hey guys, I appreciate you guys watching. Uh, if you're not a part of the MGF League, you guys can always check it out at masco.org. Or of course you can join uh, the MGF, uh, MGA Discord, Massachusetts Go Association Discord. I'll send a link. If you're not a part of it, uh, it's a huge community. We have over 500 members. MGF League games are not rated for AGA, are they? No, they're not. If they were, I'd be much stronger than a 2Q two, two AGA. Because uh, I've been facing a lot of 1Qs and 1 Dons. MGF League is awesome. Sunship, Adam. Adam, what, how's it going, man? I remember back in the day uh, when I first started the league, I was also like a teacher, right? And so I reviewed a few of your games. Those were always fun to watch. And Adam used to come to uh, my class my double digit Q class, which has been taking off guys. Um, I keep getting comments all the time saying like how helpful it's been for me to review books. Like, so if you guys haven't checked that out, you can check out my YouTube. Um, I've been going over the attack and defense book, which, uh, I've been told is actually pretty hard for a lot of people. So me explaining it in my own words and like, you know, reviewing has been helping a lot. So feel free to check that out guys. Now, in this position, 
Black has built the wall, so his goal would then be to, I would assume, expand over here to make as much territory as possible. In modern Go, I see people just attach here immediately all the time. In fact, it happens to me like 24 seven. Um, and I told Chris that I was going to study these uh, Josekis and I haven't yet. So I can play it and see how it goes. Um, my instincts tell me, like my old school instincts tell me to play like something over here to block his, uh, his approach and to help my corner. And then other modern theory just makes me want to play the 3-3, right? So I'm a little conflicted on what to do, but I think I'll try what everybody's been doing against me, which is to play right here. And let's uh, see how this goes. Maybe he studied the, Eric's probably studied this a lot more than me. Uh, he definitely has way more games under his belt than I do. Thanks to the schedule, but I've been working the YouTube, watching the YouTube. Yeah, I hope it's been helping, Adam. I, I'm sure it has. I think uh, just recently you messaged me, and uh, I appreciate it. Any comment, reach outs, messages, it's really encouraging. Like, honestly, I woke up today, and somebody, uh, somebody wrote, let's see. Somebody wrote, uh, man, this lecture is so good. I'm learning so much from this. I have the book, but this live lecture style is way better for me to understand the ideas. Thanks for the video and hope for more like this. Yeah, and <laughs> so comments like this just kind of make my day, right? Like if it's, in, I'm sure it's obviously true for him that like it's helping him specifically. So I'm really glad uh, that my work is helping people, and it really does just make my day. So appreciate all the reaching out, guys. Um, if there were, I'd be much more interested. I'm in dire need to rank update. I'm still also 2Q AGA technically, but should be at least a couple stones stronger, I hope. Yeah, I'm with you there, Baz. We're, we're uh, birds of the feather there. Hi, Michael. Hope you have a good game. Thank you, rookie. Let's see, slice of pizza pie. Thank you for the follow. Um, so nine times out of ten, when somebody goes for this under attachment, uh, I've seen White do this dancing hane, right? He hanes, and then so I hane. So this is what I call the dancing hane. Now, a lot of the times, uh, the first time I tried this out in recent memory, I Atari'd here, which then made white stronger, and then I actually had two weaknesses. The second time I tried this out, I played this, and Chris said that it's kind of submissive. So it just, I think he actually mentioned that already white's gotten a good uh, one to two action here. And so I don't even have to strengthen here. I can just uh, Tanuki. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Um, And usually I'm not about these five space extensions, but I like oh, my old school teachings tell me that like don't let this wall expand. But my new school teaching says if I play here, I remember I did this in my first Young Gunsei game uh, or Young Gunsei Dojang game. Uh, somebody just plays right here and then neutralizes this because this five space extension is not good. So I have all these mixed feelings of like pre-AI like learning, right, versus uh, modern new learning. So I think I'm going to go with a medium here. Instead of just a knight's move, I'll take a large knight's move. And if he expands here, then I'm just going to move on for now and come back and try and reduce this. Uh, what is Eric saying? So I assume you are thinking out loud on Twitch. Does that mean I should type out loud here my thoughts since I can't speak my thoughts? <laughs> uh, well, in the live review, you can tell your tale of the tape. That's what I'm going to let him say. Uh, but yes, I'm speaking my thoughts. This actually, I doubt Eric would watch my Twitch just to hear my words, because that would be kind of cheating, but, you know, it could happen. I, uh, when I play people on Twitch, sometimes that happens, and it's all right. I mean, 
I'm just like I said, I'm just playing the game to have a good time. Of course, I want to get better, but whatever happens, happens. There's no money involved in this match. Kinda. <laughs> You do have to pay for the MGF League, but you get really good reviews. Um, so Dwyron's a teacher. Colossus is a teacher. Mike Federa is a teacher. Um, Jeremiah Dongley, I think is his last name, is a teacher. He's like the strongest guy. He's like a seven done. I think he was capable of fighting in the uh, U.S. Pro Qualifier. He's, he's awesome. Um... But yeah, there's very strong teachers, and it only costs either ten dollars on Patreon, uh, or twenty dollars if you wanna do uh, PayPal. Let's see. So I don't mind pincering in a, a sense because it would help these stones out, but also this area is very small. It's gonna take a lot of work to kill these stones, so I could also just leave this. I don't like kicking. I never like strengthening my opponent towards their own stones. Um, so this comes to mind. This is ugly. You only really want to use this if you have two stones this side, I think. Um, so part of me wants to play this. Part of me wants to pincer. Um, I wouldn't mind trying this pincer out. Uh, just because in the past two games, I've been pincered, and both times I do terrible with them. Although, Itarios let me get a good result, but that's just because he messed up. So, but yeah, we could see how... Eric's a pincer guy. I know he is. I've played him a lot, and he loves pincers. So, he probably knows a lot of Joseki and uh, good concepts with, with these. So, should I play to my strength or play something uh, more experimental for me? I'm not sure. Hmm. What could he possibly do when I play here? Can he just, he'll just settle his group, right? And then I'll have like a, a strength that faces this way. I think I'm going to try the pincer out. I'm going to try a two space pincer. Let's see. You don't know all the underground bets that are happening in the underground ghost scene. I am enjoying listening to your thoughts for each move. I think this is a great way for me to improve. I am a 9K. Well, welcome. Welcome, uh, Slice Pizza Pie. I appreciate you coming by. Uh, yeah, you know, always take my thoughts with a grain of salt. The good thing is, is that after you guys listen to what I'm thinking, then you see Raven next, who's going to correct my thoughts and tell me why I, my thinking is wrong. <laughs> So uh, you get two spectrums, right? You get the idea of somebody who's really close to one down, and then you get somebody who's a six down. So um, for the most part, that's a great combo that's been working out. And if you, uh, the V rum, rumminess, thank you. Thank you for the follow, guys. Um, and of course, these stones are a little overextended. If White had one more move, this would be a lot more comfortable. But at the same time, even though there's a lot of weakness, uh, black has weakness and white can profit, right? So, of course, we're going to move ahead. We're not going to stay behind. If black keeps pushing, he's getting ahead of the race, and we don't want that. So that's the whole goal of pincering, kind of, is to profit on this side and have something to attack. Once this gets strong enough, I know then he's going to counterattack, and then we're going to have a fight all across the board. The fun thing, though, for me is, is that hopefully I'll continue to profit on the bottom while that happens. Um, this corner is prime real estate. It's the prime rib of the board. Uh, I really want to play something over here, but you can't just leave the fighting. I see double digit Q players all the time, like leave the fight and then, you know, black will turn around on you, right? And take the advantage. So... Once there's a lull in the fight, then I'm going to come over here to do something. I don't know if I'll approach or if I'll approach on the other side to work with this wall or just come into this, the 3-3. Three, three. This always seems to be the easiest and the most computer approved. So it's it feels like you can't go wrong with the R3. We're going to find out how Eric plays, though. If he keeps going forward, then I keep grabbing stuff. 
if he turns on this side, then I can uh, uh, kind of connect my stones. Uh, I could even counterattack by trying to threaten a split, but I would rather stay a little defensive. Um, and if he can, uh, comes and splits me right away, then I'm probably just going to jump up, and which is going to put more pressure on this. I didn't see him coming into the corner so early, but that is fine, I guess. Um, it is his right. When you play a 4-4 stone, the other player always has the right to take it away with the 3-3. The thing is, of course, you get outside influence, which helps you a lot. So I'm going to block. There's no other way. There's no reason to block this way. It gives black too big of a corner. Always want to keep your opponent split. Sumego needs 1k through 29k. Now, of course, if I had two white stones here, then this probably would be the right answer, right? Because you can solidify a lot of your points, but I don't have that. So I'm just going to keep my opponent split, which every move that he plays on this side is helping weaken this side, which is nice for white. Because now I can keep him, like, undercut. The thing is, he does live pretty easily in the corner, though. And if that was his goal, that's fine. The nice thing about my stuff is it seems like all my stones are starting to work together, though. But when you don't have uh, immediate cash, when you don't have immediate points like black is getting right now, then you have to prove these stones worth, which can actually be very difficult uh, for weaker players, for sure. Even stronger players, I hear Chris all the time saying, well, now you have to prove this worth, and I don't know if you'll, you'll be able to do it, right? He says that all the time. Um, but I mean, this is the game, right? This is the game of go. We have to, uh, we have to play with the cards we're dealt. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. I wonder, I could try and coax him to fight with these trash stones with something like this. I could, uh, play a move like this to block black from coming out much further. Um, So I should, this also helps. So if he tries to cut and I hit him and then he connects with like a bamboo or something, um, this move helps this white group stay strong, right? So I kind of like this. Um, it's It's got a bit of a dual purpose. Although I've played something like this before and Chris was like, yeah, why are you playing like this? So, <laughs> so it's uh, when you're getting lessons, you're always conflicted because... It's very easy to mess up those lessons. You try them and then you, you fail and you try them again and you fail. And that's that that idea of when you learn something new, you fall back two stones, right? Because you're trying to do something and you're not doing it right. <laughs> um, but I think, I think this is a good move. I think it helps this group. It helps seal this in. Um, and that is two good ideas in my opinion, right? Let's, let's seal this in and let's help this group if it gets split. <clears throat> now in my last game, I ran out trash stones like this and it allowed like black to profit and sane. So maybe these stones aren't as trashy as the ones in my last game with Itarios, but, um, yeah. So it's wise to just leave these alone for now. There's not much profit to gain here for me, but I think still approach is always nice um, to a corner. There's more profit on this side. So like an attachment or shoulder hit would be really nice right now, I think. Which I think would be okay. The other th thinking that I have is that... Uh, Let's say if I play something like this, right, or even this and allow him to kick me, um, the stronger this area becomes, the weaker these two stones become and the bigger this moyo becomes. So that's my thinking right now. Um, but I'd have to admit most of the real estate, most of the territory and profit over here is, is over here. <laughs> um... Shoulder hit's nice because it projects towards the influence on the outside. And I think helps both 
um, this in a follow-up at the attachment. I don't know really how to use this, but I remember learning it in Inseong, you know, like a year ago. Um, and I've forgotten those lessons, unfortunately. This attachment would be direct territory, but then if he goes on top, he can ruin my Moyo plan. So I'm going with this move. It has a good follow-up with the attachment here. I just don't know truly how to use it, but I'm going to try and uh, play it out. As many concepts I know, but many of them I haven't used or mastered yet, right? And so we just got to play them and learn from them. Eric mainly has three options. Um, one is to play Q6 to shore up his corner more and pressure push me this way. One is R7, which will push to, is supposed to push me this way. And then the other one, I've seen Q9 uh, played. I usually don't like this move, but I think white's so far from white that Q9, like a cutting move like this might work, but we'll see. Anyway. Tanuki is also possible. Okay. That looks weird. Uh, basic Pratt. Uh, the basic Pratt's John. Hey, John. Welcome to the stream. Glad to have you. Uh, he's one of the, the stars of the Masco Association Twitch. Uh, and he's, uh, I want to say, a four Don. Also, he was kind enough to take my live class from me. Uh, when I moved away from America, he took over teaching the elementary school kids, which... You know, he's a good, good man. I think he's also looking for somebody to replace, though, because the hours conflict. So if there's anybody in the Boston area who wants to teach, talk to Basic Prack. Uh, I, this move doesn't look right to me at all. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but in, the, in every baby's beginner basic books, right, when you're presented this problem, you have only one answer, which is to put your finger here, right? Put it. Plug the hole, because now it creates two weaknesses. You know, I could be wrong, but maybe, like, uh, because we're on the edge of the board, it's fine, but I don't know. I'm going to I'm gonna poke through. I'm going to follow instincts. Thanks for the plug, Mike. Yeah, no worries, man. Uh, guys, uh, like I said, if you can, refrain from just uh, giving me any advice on the game. Eric asked very specifically for that not to happen, and I don't blame him because, you know, he wants a very serious game. But you guys can make jokes if you want. I don't care. <laughs> or if you really super duper want to comment, I think there's a way. If you guys just go to this uh, game, right? If you go to my profile and go to the game, you guys can comment all you want in the OGS chat. And it will come up here. And then we can uh, go over them with Raven if they're like move questions and comments. I know Eric taught me about this Malkovich. I don't know if you guys know about this, but... Essentially, this is visible after the game. So if I put in things like, you know, I thought R8 was a bad move, right? Like, um, he won't see it until after the game, and then we can discuss it after. It's very useful. I don't use it, but it's very useful. I know a lot of people do. Best advice. Just don't lose. <laughs> Play good moves. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Uh, you know, those those are the jokes I was looking for. Um, so maybe playing in here has overcommitted a little. Maybe this attachment thingy doesn't work now. But I will say I like that black has a lot of weaknesses, and he's fairly flat. And so white can gain a lot of power by pushing on black, right? There's no doubt in my mind that white can gain some power. He's pushing from behind, right? As white player, I'm pushing from behind, but I can gain... A wall that's facing you know my other white stones which is usually generally good but once again this is the much harder game for me because i'm gonna have to prove the worth of my walls right i'm gonna have to uh prove the worth of my influence and that can be very difficult um it's also some of the funnest styles of play because you get to fight a lot right which is cool but i hate giving my opponents too much free stuff too much free territory still though um i think it would be wise to play pretty much anything right if this ladder worked then i could play something like this but it doesn't work if this 
let's see if obviously this ladder doesn't work either. So we can maybe we can find a way to make these work. I want I still want to try this attachment just because this was the combo I was gonna look for in the beginning. And later maybe I can make one of these ladders work. Like I could throw out a ladder breaker right now if I want to. Uh, let's see, because white isn't going to die here, right? Black can take an advantage of another move, but let me just see. Bop, 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 bop. Maybe I messed this up. I'm, I can be bad with ladders, but I'm playing a move over here looks pretty dumb. It's playing too close to thickness. Um, so part of me doesn't want to play this either right now. Um, options, options, options. I wouldn't even mind playing just this move and see if he pushes ahead. If he does, I can push another time. And then I can attach down here and try and make this wall the best it can be. So I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to push, push, and then uh, attach. Even more importantly, don't play bad moves. <laughs> yeah, I can't promise that, guys. This is going to be a difficult game for me. Eric's really uh, taking all the territory. Don't get hit on the head of two stones. That should be running through Eric's mind. If he does, I'll get a really nice seal towards my stones, and then I'll get a nice big moil. I think I can still push one more time because that concept continues to be true, right? Don't get hit on the head of three stones. Um... So uh, I will do that. Let's do that. Once again, I'm pushing from behind, though. So this is giving black lots of territory, but I'm getting lots of power. So it's the trade. It's not my favorite, but it is the trade. He can't let me hit him here. He has to jump, knights, or extend. Like, he cannot allow it. We saw that in the Taros' game, right? Yeah, yeah. Once, once you hit the head of two or three stones, you just get crumpled. So I, he can't. He just can't. My favorite part of this is when I find out I have the same or similar ideas as the one Q. <laughs> nice. Uh, let's see. Thanks for uh, stopping by, everyone. Um. You know, I see a lot of first-time chat little boxes, uh, um, which is awesome. I appreciate you guys. If you haven't followed yet, you know, please consider. Uh, I do games every single day, same time, 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern. Uh, and, of course, I do classes and uh, reviews. Thank, thank you, uh, man dork. So. <laughs> 89 is that a reference to mandark from uh dex's laboratory um so it seems that if you're a prime member an amazon prime member and you you can sign up for amazon prime gaming for free which gives you a bunch of i guess a couple games every month um and then if you follow me and you're a prime amazon prime gaming member then uh it actually supports me and my channel and gives you guys a free sub which means that you wouldn't have any ads, right? Which is cool. This looks wrong. Um, even if like white can't uh, kill, it creates lots of Aji, right? And I get a lot of free moves and co-fights. So this to me looks very wrong. Uh, you know, Raven might tell me wrong or prove me wrong, but I'm just gonna take this. There's no doubt in my mind that he shouldn't have haunted here. Yes, it is. This. That seems like a mistake. Yeah, yeah, I love, I loved uh, Dex's laboratory growing up. I think uh, honestly, I've like, I still have in memory every episode I've watched uh, because they would do a lot of reruns and Man Dark was awesome. Um, so, guys, it, here's an important fundamental you learn from the Making Good Shape book, which is to increase the sacrifice. We know that these white stones are going to get killed. But if I just Atari'd on this side and he kills, then there's no problem for him after. But if I Atari on this side now, it's uh, he still hasn't killed these. And so the Aji's here. This is what's called increasing the sacrifice. 
S11 is a, a really good move, you have to understand. Um, now I could go further and like put them in bad shape, or I could play something like this, um, which threatens a lot. I could even kind of take away his whole corner if I like sacrifice these stones. I'm not about that right now, but it is possible, right? So if I set up this and he blocks, then I Atari, Atari, and then hug this stone. It's very possible I could take the whole corner. But I'd leave this to be very weak, and I'm not, a, like I said, I'm not about that right now. It's not with my global strategy. So instead, I might just take this free move right now. There's no reason not to take the free move, which helps my stones get a little stronger. And then I think this P four or P yeah P four attachment is very nice. Um, it, essentially, I'm trying to stay within my global strategy, right? Which is to gain lots of power towards this group. Whether it'll pay off, that might be very difficult. Um, you know, I'm trading points for power, but uh, like I said, I think Eric forced my hand here, right? Like. Ever since he invaded the 3-3 here, he's forced my hand to play for power, right? He takes territory, I get power. And maybe you could argue that I forced his hand with this. Maybe I should have just played, you know, F3. Um, so maybe I started this chain reaction. But he's very focused on making solid cash. And he's not allowing me to make much. <laughs> Excuse me. So I could push and push and then hug, but uh, that would just get rid of lots of Aji. So we don't want to do that. Um, I think I'm just going to play this. The thing is, he can go up, and then I would have to try and block him from the center, and this actually leads to lots of weaknesses. So there is a very significant part of me just wanting to play this right now and then just take the corner. It just breaks my global strategy, and I hate, you know, you don't win games by doing stuff like that, right? You don't win games by changing your mind mid-game. So... I'm just doing some reading, too. Like, what if I played here, he played this, then I play here, and he plays this. And then I play here. He only has uh, two liberties, right? So he's going to have to fix. And then, you know, I'll just get this more confidently. But if I just play this outright, um, eh, I, I don't know. Let me just let me just stay to my plan. That's the unfortunate thing about me and my go is that sometimes I get distracted or other times, I, yeah, there's too many things I want to do, and so then I just have to pick one. And who knows if I pick the right one, right? A lot of the times I don't. So game can be frustrating sometimes. I mean, I'm not overly frustrated, but you know, you know what I mean. I'm sure you've all experienced it. Which book is that? Which book are we talking about? Are we talking about my latest YouTube video? That's on the attack and defense book. Oh, you're talking about probably the Making Good Shape book by Richard Bozulich. Go can be non frustrating. <laughs> There's some joy. I tell people when I'm playing Go, you guys see all the range of emotion I get, right? I get uh, happy or when I'm like winning, right? Or I get uh, greedy when I want something and I don't think I can have it, but I do it anyway. Um, I get sad, I get frustrated, I get, uh, I go through every m emotion when I'm playing Go. The game is infinitely frustrating. You mentioned sh some shape book. Yeah, Making Good Shape by Richard Bozulich. Mm -hmm. That's what I believe, I believe that's the title. I covered, I did a whole series and I covered every single thing in that book. Um, except the problems. You guys can check that on my YouTube. It's very, very helpful um, to make good shape. In fact, I think every Go player should know how to do so. Um, this is, the, like if I push here and he comes down and I cut, he's gonna have a weakness here, here, and here. 
So this looks like a bad move to me if I just push and push. Um, I'm wondering if there's anything better. Like maybe there's like a secret clamp or something. But I'm pretty sure if I just bang, bang, then I'm in a good place. So I'm going to do that. Like, yeah, this helps black fix, but then it creates a cut. And then black has so many weaknesses, so he'll have to fix. And then I can take out this stone, right? And so then I get pretty much everything I wanted in the middle so far, maybe. Is that how this works? That's my only, that's my intuition. I'm just wondering if there's anything better just to make sure. I hate giving Black confidently his corner, but I'm gonna go with this strategy. Um, it's it it could be very wrong, but if I can do um, if I can cut him in sente, you know I'll I'll be happy. So I guess that should be, that's good enough for me right now. seven stages of grief yeah yeah honestly uh yeah my, my friend pointed out to me years and years ago he was watching me play a go game online and we were he was sitting next to me and we were just talking while we played and you know there's parts of the game where i'm like yes he messed up look at all those ca captures i got and then you know later in the game i'm like oh my god i'm like facing anxiety or like fright like i'm like if he sees this move i'm gonna die right like i go through so many emotions when i play go um, if you guys want to check out what I'm talking about, you can check my channel. Um, we can go to here and I think I called it making good shape. So let me just type in making, uh, making good shape, right? You guys can find it in this playlist. Actually, that's much easier, but yeah, there's like seven videos of these, um, they're really, really good. Um, the beginning ones, the first ones I was putting out, were getting like huge views, like they're almost 300 views. And by the end of the class, people got tired of it. So I only got like 35, but it is a fantastic book. It's a fantastic uh, YouTube class. So guys, check it out. But yeah, every single player should know how to make good shape. And you guys probably know some of the basics, right? You know, the Panuki, uh, the diagonal, right? The Knight's move. But it goes in depth and shows lots of examples of, you know, everything. So definitely check it out if you can. Um, ba, 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 ba. So am I, am I just happy taking this stone? Should I, should I keep pounding on some of these weaknesses? Look at all these cutting points. If I come down, then he'll uh, Hane, and then I'll Hane, and he'll fix. And I could fix, or I could attack. Um, if I fix, it gives him the chance for him to come out, and then we're going to have a long fight, um, which should be beneficial for white, but it could backfire. Uh, if I just take now, then he gets to Atari me here, and that stinks because he gets out. So he gets lots of uh, corner territory. So I think it's better for me to block him now while I can. <clears throat> but now we have two weak trash stones. But uh, I'm going to have to prove that they can both be killed if he's going to run one out. I will say, though, at least whether it win or lose... All my stones are working together, right? Every single one of my stones, and except these, you know, because they're doing their own thing, but all the rest of my stones are working for a central goal, right? Um, so at the end of the day, I can at least say that um, I'm at least consistent with my plan. I'm wondering if there's a weakness now. If he Hanes, what if I like play here at S6? If he protects, then I can Atari, Atari, and then I can Atari this, and then does this not die? I don't think it dies. Like, there's something here, but I got to read it more. 
the amount of go to content I want to consume is disproportionate to the spare time I have. <laughs> yeah, I, I get it. I get it. I mean, all my time has been towards go now. Um, I, I can actually stream for like three to five hours every day. And then after that, I have to spend editing all the videos that come from that. And I'm way behind. I'm backlogged in my. Uh... Okay, now I can just play this and this and this and then kill this. So this was a mistake. This has to be a mistake. There's no there's no way this is not a mistake. So this is a classic problem of running out trash stones, which is just what happened with me and Itarios. And I lost the game very badly because of it. But right now, if I just play this cut, there's like, there's so much I can gain from this. So the, the question is, where do I want to gain it, right? If I play here, and then I Atari here, and then here, then I could save these two stones, get this side territory, and then these become weak and vulnerable, and it's a good fight for me. Or if I play this way, and he blocks, and this way, and this way, then I can take a full corner, and then this group becomes weak, and then I can start fighting this. So the question is, do I want to make this week or do I want to make this week? The answer probably should come from where is the more profit, right? And this is more profitable. So I'm thinking taking the corner is better. But this side has more stones that could guarantee me some territory. Though black could live here. So I just like the idea of saving my stones and trying to kill this. But uh, for a global strategy, I will try and stick with my plan. So let's go for the corner. Now, he might upset me and choose the corner by S5, but then at least I save my two stones and have something to attack. So it's up to him. The ball's in his court when I cut here. The ball is in his court when I cut here, but he, I think he's in trouble. So many good videos. Me too. I have a lot of spare time, though. <laughs> Go takes all my time, and I'm okay with that. Oof, I have too many hobbies. Me too, actually. So, guys, I have two ho Well, I have three hobbies. One is playing and teaching and sharing Go, right? That's kind of like my dream career that I'm trying to build with this project that you're looking at right now. Uh, my other hobby is uh, spending time with my girlfriend, right? She's giving me a funny face right now, but that's just true. It's like my, 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 se my second interest. Sorry, honey, right now you're second to go, and I apologize, but go go allows us to eat and have electricity, so <laughs> I, you gotta you gotta be okay with uh with go being first in my life and then third is video games, so every night at eight o'clock, I almost get zero to one viewer every night when I'm playing video games, but um at my time eight o'clock, your time eight in the morning um I play video games, which is my third hobby. Um, and that's the hobby I've been doing since I was three years old. When I was three years old, my grandmother won me at NES, and I've been playing games ever since. This was back in 1993 uh, with Mario slash Duck Hunt. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, no, it's fine. I, I, interest, uh, hobby slash interest. <laughs> Trust me, life is good. Life is good here. I have kids. This is much better to consume your time. I don't have any children, um, but I do have... My girlfriend has a daughter, so I have a, a stepdaughter. And me and her, we actually spend time playing video games together. You know, in the Philippines, they barely have any video games. The only things that they do is play on their phones, right? They don't have any game consoles. I've been to like eight electronic stores in town and only one place had like a PS2 controller. Now, I don't even think it had the console. It just had like a, a box Sony PS2 controller. <laughs> You're making it worse. Life is fine. Don't worry. <laughs> teach her go and you will combine one and two. So it's funny. Um, I did teach her the rules and my stepdaughter and they both play actually usually three games like every every couple of days or once in a while so they are getting into it uh there was a time when my girlfriend was playing baduke pop every day and um she was actually netting uh a good portion of wins which was cool um but i think 
but I think that time might have ended, and now she's back to Mobile Legends. So, I don't know. She gets upset that sometimes I stream so much I miss lunch with her. Because, you know, who likes to eat alone? Or who likes to make food for somebody who's going to eat it cold later? But, um... But what was my point with that? Oh, so I said that she can sit with me during these streams, but... You know, I don't think she can sit here for four or five hours and be entertained, so. Let's see. So now I have even more options. So I didn't think about if Eric takes this, which I did think there was an option for it. But I didn't realize that this actually could become so significantly weak that he could break my central plan. Um, still, though, I'm going to play the cards I dealt, right, which is to take this. Um, but this looks nice too. The question is, if I play this and then he takes, then I have no more Aji here. Um, I can come a little bit into the corner and I can bolster out with the scorpion shape, um, and keep to my central plan, but it just kind of, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to take this. I'll try and be happy with this. If he goes for this, then I get to go for this, right? So I'll try and be happy and trying to make a big moyo in this section of the board. Uh, so let me hit this stone. Family meal is saint. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I of course, of course, I like eating with the family. Well, this variation is gote. Um, yeah, so he's going to get the next move here, and this is why I said it breaks my central plan a bit. Um, but I do like having at least this target to attack. I can try and build something really large on this side. So the MGF League is the Massachusetts Go Foundation. Um, it is a part of the MGA, the Massachusetts uh, Go Association. Uh, I can send you guys a link. I... Um, I'm the guy who updates the website. So this feels like the wrong um, way to go for Eric because, yes, he's trying to save his group. But if these two stones get enough strength, then he's going to have trouble with this, right? And maybe he's mitigating that. Maybe he's saying, or he has that in mind, saying, like, ah, these stones will live and I'll be fine. But I don't, I don't see that completely, right? So now I get to play something like this. And it's affecting his corner significantly. Will it die? No. But it's going to allow white to get a lot stronger. Now, I could play the scorpion shape, which is a shape that I find is very useful constantly. Um, but I'm also partial to this move. Or this move. The one thing I don't want is for him to shoulder hit because I might not have an answer, a good enough answer. And then again, I might. I don't know. Like, this cut is pretty severe. He'll have to fix. And then I can come back and then attack this group. So I think I think this is okay. All right, I'm going to make the scorpion shape. It's a cannibal. I like eating families. That is definitely your business. <laughs> Um, so guys, yeah, Massachusetts Go Association, uh, we're really big in the, uh, Boston area, as you guys know, um, we have this whole setup or we did anyway, when I was still in America, where we would teach multiple elementary schools. Um, so we would go live and teach the kids, usually the age five to like 12. Um, once again, if basic Pratt's still here, it's a great guy. He took over my class when I left. But then it didn't be, it's not a part of the MGF anymore. It's more of his own thing, which all the more makes it awesome because um, that he took the job because it, it's more work for him. Because um, I didn't have to do any paperwork. I just had to teach, right? Um, I had to get my fingerprints and my, you know, my background check, but that was it. Um, 
So now uh, with the scorpion shape, if you guys don't know, it leads to really nice moves like this. It leads to nice codes. It leads to this nice jump. This is a very cool shape that I don't think a lot of people know about or how useful it is. Um, so this was uh, this was great for me, right? Because now I get to keep my central plan. And these are dead, and so I don't have to worry too much about the safety of these, which means that this became a thickness. If you don't have to worry about your life and death, then you can consider your stones thick, which means that they can't be really attacked, and they can be used to attack other people. So right now, he's really trying to run away with trash stones. There's a chance that he can save them and I lose like all my territory, but for the most part, they're just a weak group that I should be able to find a way to profit off of. So that's all I can say right now. All I can say is I think white would be considered in a good position here by strong players and pros. Uh, but of course I'm neither. So we'll see, uh, we'll see if I can use all this power to my advantage. I've never used the scorpion. I feel at my level, all that's going to happen is immediate Atari with a co. Well, yes, that is um, something, though. And the, the, the idea is that that co should be good for you, usually. Because if you lose these, so what? But if he loses this co, you know, there's a huge chance he could lose the whole corner. Like right now, this looks like a sente move to me. Because if he doesn't answer, I can kind of just take away his corner, right? I can... Uh, that And that which would be great, right? Um, so this move looks really nice to me right now. Um... Once again, he's giving me this, but he doesn't have two weaknesses like last time, like when he did over here. So this might be better than the last variation. Um, do I have to run with these? Not really. I think once I play something like this, they have a pretty high chance of living. Um, so technically, I don't think I have to run with these that much. But it also just makes me comfortable to play something like this. As much as the corner would be fun to harass, it doesn't feel like the most important part of the game. The most important part of the game right now is to keep pressure on these weak stones. So this is what I'm going to do. Even if this is a nice one to two exchange. But guys, we can stem... If you're in, you know, if you're interested in my thoughts here, we can stem all this back to this decision here. I think not <clears throat> allowing you to get hit on the head of three stones always leads to trouble because now it opened up all these weaknesses everywhere, right? So that was part of the first reason why this game is becoming a little poopy for Eric. Um, and then the other reason I think was um, he didn't Hane at P2. Right, or he didn't, something happened around here, right? I gotta focus on my next move, sorry. I wanna create the weakness and then connect and fix my own weakness. It's kind of what I wanna do. Sometimes this is considered a helping move because you lose a liberty. In this case, I have so much life and liberty, I don't think it matters, but eh, I don't know. Maybe I should just play forward, right? There's no there's no bad way to play forward. If I Hane, of course, he plays down, and then I have... Actually, I might not have enough weaknesses. So if I play here, so one, two, three, this weakness is covered. Four, if he Atari's here, then I just connect. And then five, what does he do, Atari again? Then I just give him a capture. So I think it's actually safe to Hane here, even though there's lots of weaknesses around. If he cross cuts, then I can just attach or come down. And then uh, if the Atari is either direction, it's fine for white. White is perfectly fine. So I like this Hane, even though it's not a normal move I'd look at because I have a weakness here. And I could be proven wrong. Uh, once again, my weak a lot of my weakness comes from my reading. Um, so if this guy comes up to live, can I double Hane? That's now the, that's the real question. Uh, that's I can't double Hane, so I'm going to have to connect now. Uh, and I could connect in two ways, right? This connection looks a little funny. This one uh, puts more pressure on the stone. Um, 
what was I getting? I was getting at in my reading. So ideally, if he's going to run up, right, and I keep pushing him towards my thickness, then he's going to have to fight for life. And then I'm going to gain points on this side. Another strategy is I can keep pushing him to the bottom here, like playing in this direction and then try and gain points this way. But this is a little harder to do. It's just more open. And the one thing that's a problem is I'm running out of time. So I, even though in my real games, once I hit B Yomi, I would be dead focused on the game. When I'm streaming, I can't help but talk whether I want to or not. And so this time crunch always hurts me. Always. I wouldn't say I usually crumble and B Yomi normally, but and when I stream, I do. So that's that that's that that's all i can say about that uh i really wish i poked through this now because now when he connects i have a weakness so but what i can say is all my stones survived he still doesn't have life yet so i still have a group to attack and the more i attack it the more it should i should find a way to profit my profit's probably going to come from the left side I can still take a piece of the corner here. This is a nice big corner. Uh, it threatens to hurt this too. This will most likely live, but getting P12 is so important. This has a conflict of interests, right? Like this is where white wants to find a way to make points. And if black gets this move, then white crumples into itself, which stinks. But it looks pretty safe to me there, but I guess that's why I'm in AQ. When I'm talking about attacking, um, I'm not talking about killing. What I'm talking about is um, corralling it around so that it has to be forced to live. And then while I'm corralling it, then I'm making points on this side. That's what I'm talking about. Um, this move was okay. It seems off topic. I think this has much more value. And so now I'm going to try and prove that. But I will say that if he just gets one more move at Q17, he gets a full corner, which is painful for me. So instincts will want me to play Q17. The golden attachment rule is when somebody hits you, you have the next option to get stronger. So I really want to play something like this to prevent him from taking the full corner. But he has left this group, and this group it doesn't have eyes yet. So, and it's surrounded by white, and so it's very weak. Um, it has lots of liberties, but it's very weak. And so, I'm going to uh, prove to him that that was a bad idea. We should do some evaluating. So anytime there's a break in the fighting, um, we should evaluate points. So we're looking at two, four, six, maybe eight and nine, roughly. And that can change. Somebody might evaluate that different. Part of me wants to play here. It leaves a weakness, but it's poking at two different eye shapes. Parmy wants to play here, which is also poking at another eye shape. Um, and then another Parmy wants to play here. I think this is fine. Uh, and a third part wants me to play here and stick to my plan of building up this side. So I think I'm going to pick this one out of the three. Because ideally, I don't want to kill Black here. I just want to make him surrounded and then make him live small. That's what I really want. Um, so we got nine points here. I think R1 is my right at any point, which then would bring him to S2. And so he really only has two, four, six, seven, eight points on this side, which would be what, 17. Then right now he has nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And he's gaining some more. So there's another nine. 
Uh, this doesn't worry me. This isn't the focus of the board, I don't think. I can even put make a move to undercut him a little. So why not? Why don't I play this move right now? Um, I should have kept to my strategy, actually, most likely, but this move really doesn't worry me that much. I guess maybe he's looking at this cut now, which I will, you know, just gladly give away. Uh, I'm going to play this because I think it's Sente. I think he will answer it. And then I think I'm going to play E14. Because if he is looking at this cut, this move overshadows his territory. So I can build a strong wall, which will help my territory on the bottom. Um, so let's put some more stuff together, right? Uh, let's see. Take 4, that would be 21. Then you add the 10, that would be 31. And then you add the 9, that would be 40. So he's got 40 points with these three corners. Might as well give him this one now, too. So here's another 9. Here's a 6. Um, so that would be 15, which would be 55. And he's got one capture, making 56. So roughly, roughly he has 56 points. White... Uh, let's see, has maybe, maybe, I'll just put this down. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16 points. 2, 4, 6, 8, you know, maybe a, another 9 or 10. So I'll, I'll put 9. This doesn't look right to me. I know that he gets a free Atari if I take, but it still doesn't look right to me. I'm just going to play this. And then I'll play... If I take the stone, he gets all these free moves. That's what he's going for. But what if I just stay strong with this? He gets to push with 018, but it's going to be in Gote. If he plays R18, it's still in Gote. <clears throat> Or is it Gote? I better check that. Like, maybe he just can answer or play where he wants now. <laughs> yeah, I guess he can. But this becomes a squeeze, so I'm fine with that. All right. Knight's moves can be cut. I don't know if I should care about the cut. I feel like I shouldn't, so that's fine with me. I think I will use the knight's move. I forgot I wanted to play E14, and also P12 is nice. But this group is still not alive, so I can keep hammering down on it. And if he forgets, if he prefers to come out here more, then I can come over here to poke its eye space even more, like at L6 or something. Uh, so white has 16 and 9, and this should at least come out to 4 points. So that is fine. So it's 29. And that's mainly it for white secure points right now. Um, so in lead of territory, the balance of territory, he has more territory. But I have far more potential, right? Like if we look, black doesn't have any places to stretch to make more points. The only thing he can do is try and break up mine. But right now, this is starting to become huge. This could probably easily make up um, my 30-point deficit. <clears throat> Here's a pro tip. You can win quickly if you play more moves per turn than your opponent. Yeah, if I could put down two moves, I would. This is insane. This is truly insane. Uh, he's going to try and fight while he has a very weak group. That is not a good fundamental to have, right? Because now every move I make is going to hurt him more. Let's get a move here. Maybe he can make one here, but then that's it, right? Like, and then I can play right if he does the 
right? Um, yeah, so it's insane to try and fight me. I don't play this to increase the sacrifice. Remember we talked about increasing the sacrifice earlier? I couldn't have pulled this up if I didn't increase it. So I'm going to play this move, which I don't think it's truly necessary. But I don't have time to read, so I'm going to increase the sacrifice. Everyone else getting stream lag. Sorry if you guys are. My uh, in the Philippines, the internet can uh, be kind of wonky. So I still feel more than powerful enough to play something like this, which would take away a lot of his eye shape. But my goal is to gain just lots of power this way to make points, right? So I'm going to stick to my goal. And I think I'm going to... I think I'm just going to push here. I wonder if there's any, like, cuts or something I can uh, handle. Because if I can clip this stone off from its base, then this area is starting to go, too. He should. I think he should have hit me on the head of three stones, and because he didn't. Now I can move here. Uh, which I will gladly take. Yep. So now I have four stones, which makes these significantly stronger. Um. One reason I want to play this is to try and uh, clip this. To move at b13 is not nice for me if i play this then he can't play b13 with a good result but then he can jump out this way which kind of stinks for me so either way i'm gonna play the hante move because now this territory became almost guaranteed so uh i'll count these to my points well i'll wait and to see what happens with this stone um Feels like the wrong direction. I know that he's very weak and vulnerable right now and doesn't have two eyes still, especially when I play this move at N6. But, oh. but um, I have to think about some stuff, right? Maybe I should just clip this stone right now. It'll make me happy. And this is probably a slow move. It's probably not considered good. I might get yelled at by my teacher. But the idea is that if these stones have no problems, then this area is concrete. Now I can play things, right? I, can, I think I can play like something like this and jump up. Um, I don't have to worry about this. This is thickness, right? And so he's trying to break up the moi that could have happened here. But I'm not that. Right now, I think I'm going to play this move or this move or this move i'm gonna play this move i think f 17 would have been better because it could link at h 17 or it could jump at f 15 but i don't know for sure I'll tell you i'm not acting as stone He is hitting the vital point, as you guys can see. Um, if I just connect here, I'm fine. He ha he owes a move, right? He owes a move here. Because now he just lost points, and this stone gets cut from the base, which makes it very weak. Uh, I think he's very jealous of my large amount of points here, and so that's why he played this. But he's hurting his own group and giving me more stuff to attack. This might be um, Eric's main weakness, which is he tends to get jealous in the, of territory and then plays kind of unreasonable moves. I don't mind playing this. Nice moves are cut away from the dog spaces, but I don't like him pushing through the elephant eye. Although it's not that big of a deal. 
So you know what? I am going to play it. Breaking the dog's face shape really hits his vital point, right? This is the idea of understanding shape. Um, so I'm essentially making this area a little vulnerable, but I'm also creating a very vulnerable group for him. Um, I can cut through this now with, I think, pretty much no consequences. Uh, I could be wrong on that, but the ladder works, so I definitely could. I might even be able to cut through these knight's moves, right? Like I can poke here and then push and cut, but I don't know if I want to do that. I'm not against it. This empty triangle looks stupid, but it comes with multiple cuts, so I'm down with it. I play empty triangles if the cut works. He didn't actually save this on both sides, though. Kind of. Kind of. Like, what if I play this first to combo this cut? But I'm not going to kill him. I mean, I'm not going for the kill to kill him. Uh, instead, I should be more focused on other things. I can't tell if this is a real technique, but I'm going to cut this one off because I know this is fine to do so. Let's do some counting now. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, seven, six. Five times six, that would be 30. So I've already made up my 30 point deficit, and he lost nine stones actually. So now I'm leading in the. Uh, the balance of power, uh, mean, uh, sorry, the balance of territory, which essentially means that I'm leading in points. Uh, so this game should become significantly easier for me. So, um, Lechtauter, uh, you mentioned that, like, yeah, you thought this group was alive, right? You it. And you were correct, alive, but it's attackable. And so while I got to attack it, I got to profit in, in a humongous way. And so um, you don't want to have weak groups. Whether they can live or not doesn't matter. If it's a weak group, then you're going to get attacked. And then if a stronger player will be able to profit. But you have to look at that. So I get to do a dirty cut here, right? I could do a proper cut. Let's do a proper cut. Because then I get to Atari here, right? Does this actually work? It makes a lot of weaknesses, but I think it's whatever. Ah, uh, he okay. So now he made this uh, ladder work. So his goal was just to save the stone, but I feel like he's still hurting himself a lot, which is great for me. So. So yeah, I mean, I'll just I'll just take that as a, a, a win for me. Um, so let me play first. Maybe I'm getting too overconfident, and my time is not allowing me to read as much as I want, so I have to calm down. But I will say that um, I'm st I did take the lead, I believe. Yeah, uh, trying to find where to profit the hard part, right? But... I have these great classes I'm doing that's going to be able to teach you how to do that. So feel free to tune in to my YouTube <laughs> uh, because I will be covering once a week a lecture on attack and defense from the attack and defense book. Uh, so there's my self plug. Uh, now, should I care about this ladder? Let's see, one, two, three, four. Why don't I just cut through and like, make the ladder good for me again? But why don't I just play here anyway, right? And so now I don't have to worry about any incursions. Um, and then I can make the ladder good for me. Because who cares? It's just one stone. It's let me check that out. I, uh, I got to focus because if I uh, if I lose a winning game, especially against my rival who's beaten me more than I've beaten him, I will just be really mad at myself. So I got to focus, guys. Um, 
But of course, please still keep commenting. I mean, I like the jokes. It, just, it makes life fun. Uh, after this game, Raven uh, on seven. And he's going to go over this. With um, he owes Eric a review, and he always likes helping me out. So I'm very excited to, you know, get this review. Um, is this the most important part of the board? For me, you could say it is, right? Because I need to keep all my territory. But is that the best move he right now for him? You know, I think there's bigger moves out here. I haven't talked about this territory yet. So one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, if I play this, this breaks the ladders. Um, so I'm going to play this to break this ladder. And Eric saying, getting near the end, this has been exciting, lots of fun. Thanks for the game. Is I doubt he's going to resign. When somebody says thanks, like early. I, I bet it's like a, uh, I know it sounds crazy to think like this, but I bet it's like a psychological tactic, right? Because when somebody says thank you for the game, it makes them sound like they're going to end it or like, or something so then it puts the other player in a good mood i'm like yeah i'm winning right yeah like so it could be a psychological talent i mean eric's a crafty guy he's a crafty man you could argue these white stones aren't alive yet so i should probably uh make some extra eye around here like even if i just take then that is then that's the uh, way White's going to live here. He is crazy, man. Like, maybe because he's behind, he feels he has to make some nutty moves. But, like, this is nuts to me. Um, like, I would have blocked here, right? But he knows he's behind, so he can't play the simple moves. So he has to come out and make the game complicated. I might have lost, like, nine points he did gain maybe more than nine points, maybe here. So I, I don't know. I don't have time to count anymore. So I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, like, I could just give him the stone, too, and, like, be happy that I'm connected. Which I'm also fine with. Like, he can just have these. Maybe I shouldn't think that way, right? Maybe if I give away too many points, I'll lose. But I am making some profit in this area. And he still has any weaknesses I can exploit. Like, I can try and counterattack with something like this. If I split off this group, that could lead to a lot of danger for him. For mutual destruction. This was a free get it that's big um but taking this is you know pretty much just as profitable if you have maybe more so because it's getting this cut now so i can just give up this stone if he wants it i could even give up these two stones if i can kill this whole area Because this is most likely going to be a false eye. Most likely. Wow, he's connecting this way. Isn't this crazy? Because I can cut this. Isn't isn't that crazy? What do you guys think? My end game's not my strongest. I'm running out of time, you know? So I'm going to threaten this cut. If he wants to connect here, then I'll uh, be best to kill this group. Okay, yeah. So he did notice what I was doing, which then allows me to then fix this so I can get the points again. Um, so if K 
can I cut this successfully right here, right now? I think I can. I think I can. If I get this, then all anxiety of winning or losing goes away, right? Like, if this just dies, then there's no question in my mind white's winning. It's always nice to face somebody stronger than me or just as strong as me on stream and still win. I don't do that too often. Um, I think it, this is on the Massachusetts Go Twitch. Um, he covers games from Hikaru no Go. Um, because I think they're all based on like real life games, right? So are we going to do a trade? Like, is he going to... Yeah, I, I mean, I, this might become a trade. He might get these three stones, but that's I don't know if it's going to happen. So. Let's see. And then the question becomes, should I be happy with that trade? Because technically I could gain like almost nine points here. Maybe it would be six or seven. Um, so maybe I shouldn't be happy with this trade. But I don't have the time to... Uh, think about it unfortunately so I'm just gonna make that trade so he's gonna have to spend two moves to get these stones and I don't have to well I do have to spend moves to get these So now what? Do I play here and then uh, take these? Do I play here and then play here? This is much more, um, what do you call it, dangerous, right? So I think this is the better way to go about it. Uh, but I could be wrong, guys, so, you know, we'll see. Like I said, he has to spend another move here to get these. So he still might not get what he wanted, right? He still, like, if I connect here. I mean, I'm fine with just playing strong. Maybe he got the better out of this trade. I don't know. But he's going to have to come back to take this. Um, I can play here. I can play here. Action still looks good. So I'm going to play this. Should play G15, and then I play here, and then he's going to play here and here, and then I'm going to have only two liberties. So if he Atari's, I connect. If he Atari's this way, I connect. Should be fine. But you have to read a lot of moves to, to make sure that's okay. White and 13. Now, guys, remember, uh, please don't uh, try and help me. Um, I guess you said it in the aftermath, so it's fine. But Eric, really a very serious. And so uh, I want to respect that, of course. Now, I missed the fact that stones. But now I can take me some profit again. So I, I keep losing and winning, losing and winning. Um, so I'm going to take this. If I get P14, then I'll be really cooking with some gas. If he takes P14, then I'll have to guard, which only gives me about six, eight points here. But if I play here, then I get an extra, like, at least two to three points, if not more, because then black doesn't get this. 
before, right? Like if I'm gonna do, just connect. Or if he cuts, then I just double Atari. H Sente whether I play this anyway, right? And I get at least get a capture, which is nice. Now, guys, there's been plenty of times I missed something in the end game and just ruined my whole game. I'm pretty sure I lost the arc by that point. Um, just don't, don't leave seats left yet, right? There could be a big. Um, I mean, I can just right, and then, but this uh, this this uh, sets up almost like a sente. This is gote. If I'm winning, Gote's fine. Um, so I'm going to play this, which sets up a Sente. He technically can move where he wants, but I always have now A10 for free. That was the move that we discussed. So now he's going to profit quite a bit, but in Gote. Yeah, I this is maybe this is where Eric shines. His power can be in the end game because mine definitely isn't. So this is where um, maybe we can see. they say you can points in the end game, and uh, William Luff has taught me that time and time again. I'm wondering if any of these moves are like a real thing. Like I feel like this is definitely a real thing. So I kind of want to play it. So like play this first. And then play this. And now I can potentially save these, but I can potentially save these and take a lot, a lot of points away from Eric. Um, was it Sente? I didn't read that far ahead. So it might not be, which might make it a bad move. But... Um, Life is okay. Do some reading. Maybe he found some. This is like I said, I make my mistakes in a game and it happens. So one, two, four, five. I can because I'm ahead in the race. Okay. I would hate for me to like get Atari and killed here. It's fine because I played at first the peep. Playing Q15 would be big and somewhat sente ish. Playing A10 is sente. He's getting his sente moves here, which is great for him. Like I said, I think Eric's strength has a lot to do with his end game. Um, this, right? I don't want to lose all this. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, He's gotten pretty much every game so far. This is huge now, though and save these you know this is like a, almost a 10 point swing one two three four five six that was good on him i can i can play this in sente right because he should answer it's worth at least four something points i can just Nine points, which is huge. I don't know if I should or not, but I, it's in my mind, right? I think I'll just save these stones. Here's nine points gone for for black, which nine to ten, nine to ten point swing can completely change a game.
I hate not knowing if I won or not. Um, Cause I know in the end game, he's gained quite a lot of points. I know this gave me a 30 point lead lower. I'm sorry. 30, it made up the 30 points that I needed. And then capturing this is even bigger, but I did give away um, these stones in some territory on the top. So there was a, there was some trading there. Um, I played this. He might be, he's probably looking to try and make these weaker, but everything's so strong. Life is good. Uh, I could actually this move now, because if he plays here, then I can just kill him, right? No, I can't kill him. I have to play here. Let's not make any dumb mistakes. Let's not make any dumb mistakes. Just stay connected. Life is good. Oh. This could get scary, so if I get disconnected, there's still a way for him to make sure I don't have um, but I think he just has that problem because now I'm connected yeah now I'm connected I use right Play in the three, and then I can't. Disconnection then, and then take these points right away. Oh, no. Oh, no, my internet just went out, I think. I got to get my phone. Switch. If I lost by time, <laughs> damn, I thought there would be oh, 11 peep. Uh, sorry, I'm just following him, like, my mind is so out of it now. Yeah, the O, oh, 10 peep, you know, there was a thing about it. I would have lost, I think, one stone if I played it smart. So, like I said, he helped me, so I'm happy. And I am very sad. But we will see. Take this. Yeah, we lose two. To lose it all. Guys, so who's winning? If you guys want to write in the comments, like take a poll, you know? I think there's a way I can like set that up. But I don't have time to try it, so sorry. But yeah, I think one, do you think white one or black one? Without like counting. If you count it, that's cheating. <laughs> yeah. To me, which I hate. Like this pinched so I lose a point here this is actually pinched if uh, if he plays 01 so then I lose a point it's just 
So now, see, if he plays here, then I have to, like, play here, right? So that's pinched. That's pinched. But I can counter. I can play 19. That's I got a little end game going. Can, can I play this? Maybe this was go today. I, I don't think I can play this move, so it actually was Gote. So for him, I would play... That would not be what I played. It's okay, but I think this would have been better for him. Um, there's, it feels like there's something here, but there isn't. this something? No, it doesn't look it. It's really nothing for me on this board, I see. So I'm just playing dummy. I can play his pinch moves. He can pinch me at 9. So he could have, this could have been an extra. I guess when I play here, though, it makes a nice snapback. So that's cool. So he can never play here, right, without getting hurt for it. So very cool on to see that. Dang, guys. Wow, you guys hate Endgame, too. Uh, I think, you know, just 10 moves ago, I had like over 20 viewers. And now that we're in the end game, I've dropped down to like five. <laughs> well, I appreciate you all sticking around. Guys, do know that um, a six down will be reviewing this after. So for anybody who's okay problems in this. I just think that's funny how we drop once we hit end game. Wondering that, I was wondering if we took away every single liberty, would be pinched here, and the answer is yes. So he nipped that right now. That's interesting. I was thinking that because there's not one eye in this this black group, this black. Okay, he's passing. I'll pass too. What do we get, guys? What's the score? Okay, I won. So, unless I'm missing something. Awesome, awesome, awesome possum. Yes, I redeemed myself. Thank you for the game. So now me and Eric are three and three.